Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement 2 Second Channel Video. Today, I'll be talking about this Sony KV1221R television. I checked this out in a previous video. If you haven't watched that, uh, check that out. This TV generally worked fine. It just had a picture that needed some tune-up. So I've done that tune-up, but I discovered a little fault with this television and it has a remote control for changing the channel or turning it off and on. When you push the power button quickly, and I don't have it plugged in, the television will turn on and immediately turn off. If you hold the power button down, it kind of does that and then it turns back on and stays on. So there's clearly something going on with this television and I'm gonna try to fix that today. Now I'm gonna start off by saying that I don't have the schematics for this television. They are available, I see a seller on eBay, I have it up on my screen here, you can't see it, but it's 10 bucks for the original Sony service manual plus $5 shipping or so, and it's uh, from the US here, so it would get here pretty quickly. But I'm gonna try to give this a quick fix myself first before I resort to the service manual. I think, you know, I'm not a fan of recapping. I think if you watch my videos, you know that I am not a recapper unless there's a fault. Now this television, um, this board I have off the little holder here, this is the board that has some remote control stuff on it. Sony is really good with labeling their boards and it says remote control right here. And on this side, which you can't see, this side of the board, here's the relay that turns the power on and off. And down here it says AC. So that's this large black relay. Now, notice this plastic part here is very baked. It's so, so baked. So clearly it got hot over time. And that leads me to believe that because this is the section of the TV with the relay, so that's turning off and on the television, and it looks extremely baked, that perhaps there's something in this area that's problematic. And I am leaning towards a capacitor specifically that it got baked for so long that it's dried out. Now down here in this corner of the television, there are two large power resistors. Now, as a side note, I've had this TV unplugged for, I don't know, a week or, or two. So it's it's been a while since I've touched it. Two power resistors on this board, which I have partially off, there's another power resistor. And look at what's right above a power resistor. <laughs> there's a capacitor right there. Hopefully it's in focus, I've tried to zoom up. Sony put it on two little wires and it was folded out of the way. So it wasn't directly above this power resistors. I folded it out to try to look at it. I bet you that cap might be problematic. Now Sony being Sony, especially in the old days where they were such a great company at designing electronics, they really designed their stuff to be serviceable. Every electrolytic has a little symbol on it. And I've marked a couple red marks on on these ones here. There's a little symbol that tells you the polarity, so I don't have to try to look at the other side of the board to figure that out. It doesn't show the value, unfortunately, but that's not that big of a problem because I'm gonna quickly test these in circuit with my LCR meter, and you can pretty much tell when a cap is bad because electrolytics don't have values like in the picofarads, for instance. So if you measure something and it's something picofarads, we know that cap is basically not doing anything anymore or if it comes back as some other weird value. Here's my LCR meter that I use. This is a DE5000. You can get these off of eBay or whatever. I like this thing, works pretty well for me. It tests inductance, it tests resistance, it tests capacitors. It allows you to change the frequency of the capacitor test, which is very helpful. I have the entire kit, which includes like a, a low loss plug-in module for it. You can stick caps directly into this slot right here, or you can just hook up test leads like this. I have a set of old multimeter leads. I've put a couple test probes on. So that way you can have this sitting there and you can just hook this onto things for quick and easy testing. On the tester, I'm gonna switch it over to test at 100 hertz because um, this is a power control circuit. In other words, it's controlling the AC part of this TV. So probably is filtering or whatever power supply. So it, it runs at 100 hertz. And I'm just gonna hook on to this cap right here, just as a test. And on the LCR meter, we're getting 10 microfarad. And the D value up here is kind of like a resistance value. This thing does support ESR, but I just, I'm used to looking at the D value, but 10 microfarads, I don't know what cap that is. Um, on the other side, it's, it's a larger electrolytic, but that's probably completely fine. 
I mean, 10, it's, it's very close to 10. The D value is not really high, it's under, it's under one. So I'm gonna say that's fine. So really, it's all about just going around the board and testing everything, especially in this section of the board here, which is probably all baked. Now that one cap that was right over that resistor is this one right here. And I just have to hook on. Sometimes you can't hook on, you have to kind of hold the probe on, whoops, <laughs> like that. These hooks work pretty well when the leads are long, but if they're not, you just have to kind of hold them in place. I wanna hold this thing up to the camera. 20 microfarads, but the D value is over six. That's far too high. So this cap, it's pretty much bad. Let's turn up the frequency. So here it is at one kilohertz. Now we're getting two microfarads. And if we go to 10, 62 nanofarads, not good. And 100 kilohertz, yes, it's, it's not reading good. So I don't think this cap is in good shape. Now, really, I just need to desolder it, pull it off the board. Sometimes testing in circuit is not super accurate, but I'm gonna pop this thing off of here and we'll test it outside of this and then I'll, I'll pop a new one in there and see if that changes anything. All right, so what value is this capacitor or rather was this capacitor? Well, 16 volts, 100 microfarad. That's definitely not what I was getting when we were measuring it, but let me put this on the tester. Yeah, I'm gonna say that capacitor, it's dead. 336 picofarad. Let me put this down to 100 Hertz. We're still getting 400 picofarads. So that cap, definitely bad. The values you notice are different than when it was in circuit though. So we may not have been getting a very accurate reading there, but it definitely, the fact that this was baked <laughs> in a baked zone and then reading kind of funny, it just, uh, yeah. Oh, and just in case anyone wants to see, there's no evidence of any leakage or bulging or anything like that. The cap is just, it's been baked. Here's what I'm gonna be putting into this board. I have 100 microfarad, 25 volts. What brand is this? Rubicon, so decent brand. Of course, these came from DigiKey, as you can tell by the packaging. And look at how much smaller new caps are. <laughs> Just that's what this TV is from the early 80s, I think 82. So that is the difference in size simply from a little bit of time passing. I will take some heat shrink, stick it on the leads just to replicate what Sony had done to uh, allow it to be bent over. And just for fun, I'll measure the value of this cap that's installed in here. We are getting 91 microfarads and the D value is 0.09. So yeah, that's a far, far more realistic rating, uh, reading that is, compared to this cap I just took out. I'm just gonna use a little hot air to shrink down the, uh, the heat shrink I put on the leads. So there we go, like that. And then I will fold the cap out of the way. So it's out of the way of this uh, ridiculous, super hot resistor. Now I did go through and check all the other caps in this section and they all look fine. That was the only one that was completely out of whack uh, with uh, the readings. So I'm just gonna clip this board back into place here. All right, turning on the master switch on the top here. Here we go. <laughs> There we go, turn right on, no double clicking, required no holding the button down. Let's turn it off. Turned off well, let's try that again. <laughs> I'm trying to push it really quickly. Yeah, just, that works. That was the solution. So I can cross off the power off issue <laughs> with this TV. It was one seriously baked capacitor. So if you like that little second channel repair video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. It really helps me out on the second channel if uh, people subscribe. And of course, if you haven't seen my main channel, check that out. It's uh, full of videos that are a little bit higher quality than this one. I'm gonna be using the second channel for these quick repair type videos where I don't quite have enough to make a full video out of, but I thought it'd be really fun to share with my viewers. And I just wanna thank my patrons for supporting me and the channel. And if you wanna become a patron yourself, you can do so in the description below. There's a link down there. 
And that's going to be it. Thanks very much for watching. Stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.